They love it on Nebula. They're wild about it on Torinus. Even on Motus, where they don't like anything at all, they eat it up. It's Atari's Moon Patrol. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are checking out Moon Patrol. Boom! From 1982, Irem Corporation. Moon, P Moon Patrol is, of course, the game where you play as a Luna City police officer assigned to Sector 9, the home of the toughest thugs in the galaxy. I'm going to go out on the record and say it doesn't look like any thugs actually inhabit this moon, you know, thuggy neighborhood. In fact, it looks like a barren wasteland to me. Oh, with some um, alive evil plants. I'm not playing, by the way, just at the moment. This is the computer playing. Oh, there's tanks. Okay, I guess there are thugs. Um, and as we will see, this is a an interesting game for its its time. It really combined elements of things like Space Invaders and almost Mario in a way. I guess it was ahead of his time for Mario or Jumpman, as he was called back then, because it has jumping. All right, let's hop into this baby and uh, see where we get, or see how it goes. We're going to insert four quarters and press start. Here we go. Beginner course, go. Okay. So that's that button, and that's that button. Got it. It's a two-button game. Very simple. Um, apparently, you are in a very crappy-looking, uh, you know, moon vehicle here. Oh, oh, what the... I didn't really stand a chance there. Get away! Okay, I read a tip that said if you jump and shoot at the same time, it'll make it easier to hit the UFOs. That's what I'm doing. Whoa! Um, you'll see at the top there that there's certain checkpoints that I'm trying to get to, so I want to get to E, J, O, T, and Z. E, Jods. Um, now I say Z. So we're, you're going to see we go through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, O, J, K, L, M, O, P, etc. Um, when I was reading about this, by the way, um, just as a total lark, um, do you guys, do you say Z or Z? Because I'm Canadian, and like the rest of the English-speaking world, I don't pay attention when I drive on the moon. Um, I say Z. Americans say Z. And it's always kind of, like, confused me as to, to why there's this difference between the, uh, the countries. And I always kind of wondered, I mean, I always thought Zed was correct. Hey, we hit a checkpoint. Because Zed is how the British say the letter Zed, and they're the ones who invented English, right? So how could they be wrong? Um, so I figured Canada was doing it right. What do you guys think? Do you think Z or Zed is the quote-unquote correct pronunciation? Ooh, now we're in like uh, a moon city. Looks very different from, from Earth. The architecture looks very foreign. So are these aliens on the moon, or is it humans? And they just got some odd design sensibilities. They were like, you know what? I'm sick of all this Earth architecture. Let's go full moon. If we're going to live on the moon, let's feel like we're in a, a freaking alien society, man. Um, and if that is why they have these weird moon structures, I dig it. Although, I don't know what these things are, because they're getting in my... They're really... They're killing my buzz here. Lucky for us, we can continue. This is one of the features that actually people didn't like about Moon Control when it came out. I mean, to the casual gamer, the ability to continue is really good. But to the hardcore gamers who were interested, you know, back in the time in the 80s when this came out, the early 80s, people played arcade games to get high scores. But what was the point of trying to get a high score when you could essentially just insert as many quarters as you want and continue infinitely? I've gone on the record before saying I like that about arcade games because it means I actually can probably finish a game here and there for you guys. Unlimited continues is kind of a good thing, but if you think about it, crap. Back in the day when this was in the arcade, it basically meant that arcade games became pay to win. Because if you had the money, you could beat every game. And so what was kind of the point of playing a game at that point? And actually, probably the, the introduction of continues like this is what really changed the face of gaming, because before you could insert quarters and just continue forever. We've reached J. J is the most awesome checkpoint ever, by the way. I'm not biased because it's my name, um, but I didn't get a bonus. What? I should get the J bonus. It's my freaking name. Whoa, mines. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, the, uh, the whole checkpoint thing, you know, another checkpoint, oh, jeez. The ability to continue really changed the face of gaming, because before you could continue, basically, you played games to get the high score. But now that you could continue games, really, oh, jeez, that is hard. Really, the point of gaming changed to the point where it's like now the high score doesn't matter so much. It's more about can you beat the level. And I obviously can't beat this level. So yeah, the I don't know, the continue thing. I mean, I personally like it. I understand why gamers in the 80s didn't like it when it came out. The hardcore gamers, at least. The casual ones probably liked it. But it's working to our advantage now because we might actually, if I can get past this stupid mine, be able to beat Moon Patrol. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh no. Crap. It's really hard to control yourself when you move. Anyway, back to our little puzzle here. Is it Z or Z? What do you guys think? Have you thought about it? Have you puzzled it out? Crap. How am I supposed to get past this part? I'm really teasing you guys with this Z-Z thing, because I know the answer. Oh man, this is hard. Challenge. I do not like challenge. Turns out Jay is the most horrible checkpoint. Okay, I'm gonna stop titillating you here. Crap. The answer is that Z is the correct way to say the letter Z because the letter Z comes from the Greek letter Zeta. So Zeta is the originator of Z. So Zeta, Z, you can see where it comes from. So where the heck did Z come from, you might wonder. Oh, come on, I was jumping. Z was kind of invented in America. Um, I forget, I looked this up, but I forget the exact origin. I think in the six, 1677 was the first ever mention of Z. And it kind of came from the fact that we had A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, we had all these E letters in the alphabet. My God, this game went, like I got to the halfway checkpoint so easy, and now I can't, can't even get over these stupid mines. And what happened to the city and the thugs and the aliens? Maybe, like, my guy is really stupid because he's driving through a minefield and, like, no one's dumb enough to follow him here. They're like, what are you, crazy? Oh, damn it. And you can't steer yourself in the air. That is one thing I really, that really bothers me about uh, games that have crappy jump controls is when you can't steer yourself in the air. Okay, we're going to let this reset a sec so that you're not just watching me die in this minefield here. We're going to regather our thoughts and kind of go through the first level or two again. And hopefully by the time we get to this mine thing, I'll be a little more experienced at this crappy jumping controls. Because I'm going on the record and saying it's not me who's bad, it is bad controls. But anyway, so we have Z, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That kind of gave rise to Z. And you know what popularized Z and really made it American was the Alphabet Song. In good old, what was it, 1835, I think? Something like that. A long time ago, at least. Um, the fact that you had the last sort of component of the song was X, Y, Z. Next time, won't you sing with me? Me and Z rhyme. And so, you know, what's a fellow to do? You can't put Z in there now. And then all of a sudden, everyone was saying Z. So there you go. A little bit of linguistic trivia for you guys, because I am all about the edumacations and teaching you something new. You never know what you're gonna learn when you turn into my channel. Um, another bit of trivia from this game is it uses something called parallax scrolling. And this is another notable feature of good old Moon Patrol here. What, you may wonder, is parallax scrolling? Well, parallax scrolling is what you see going on in the background there. See how there's um, orange, green, and blue hills behind us. Well, if you pay attention on the next screen here, the very distant background is going to scroll at a slower rate than the not so distant background, which is going to scroll at, any, at a slower rate than the very forward background. So what this does, so look, the orange ground is scrolling really fast, the green is a little faster or a little slower, and the blue is very slow. This is called parallax scrolling, and this is one of the games to kind of um, popularize it. But as you can see, I'm playing a 2D game here, but I have the illusion of 3D. And this is something that I talked about back when I played 1943 as well. They used parallax scrolling there to really give you a good sense of, of depth and height, which I thought was actually really cool. Um, you know, if you had never seen this before, then yeah, this game would have been pretty incredible when you saw it for the first time. 
you would have thought, whoa, like, it looks really cool. And so even though I'm in this crappy purple buggy with really crappy controls and crappy jump controls, uh, you know, this game would have blown a bit of minds when it first came out. So you always got to think about those kinds of things when you play these old games. You know, it's easy to look at a game like this now and be like, oh man, it's crap. It does not hold up well. I mean, what is even going on? The Luna City police fighting like the toughest thugs in the galaxy? I'm not even really fighting thugs. What am I fighting? Fighting like errant satellites and like UFOs. And where the hell am I driving? So yeah, where am I going? These are good questions. Like, what, what is my cop guy doing? He's just seemingly doing like uh, donuts out in the middle of a empty moon field. He's not actually busting any uh, criminals or anything. So yeah, I don't know. But when you think about, you know, in the context of what existed around this time and stuff, you know, this is back in the era when like pinball machines were still a huge component um, of arcades. And you know, that's one thing that, oh man, look how good I'm doing now. No, no, no. Oh. I was doing good there for a little while, wasn't I, guys? You gotta, mo you gotta like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Crap. Am I ever gonna get to see Zed? Maybe the game's trolling me because I refuse to call it Z. It's like, come on, man, you're playing an American game. Just freaking call it Z and we'll let this one slide. But I'm too stubborn. Too stubborn for that, guys. I don't play games when it comes to the correct pronunciation of letters. Alright. But yeah. I mean, think about this game existed alongside pinball machine games. And you know, one question I've always had is how strong of a connection do you guys really make between arcades and pinball machines? Because you know, when you think about it, okay, maybe back when pinball machines were out, and they were sitting next to games like this, you could kind of say, well, they're kind of similar in complexity. But like, think about modern arcades. Do pinball machines even make sense to include in arcades? Like games have gotten so sophisticated. It's almost as if pinball machines never evolved with the times, right? Like, what do you think about that? Do you think if arcade games had never been invented, that pinball machines would have gotten more sophisticated? Ah, I'm doing good. I've always kind of wondered about that. Like, did arcade machines inhibit the progress of pinball? Yes. Okay, now we can't die because I've, I've never passed the minefield before. You know, in, uh, I think it's, you know, I was thinking about this before uh, I started to make this video, but in Chicago or New York, Maybe it's like Minneapolis or something. I don't know. In my travels, I have come across a, uh... No! Oh, man. We gotta get to O. If we can get to O, guys, this is it. Yes! Oh, yeah. Checkpoint. Cha-ching. Now I can pay to win to get the T. See? I just needed to go back and retry things. But anyway, in my travels, I actually came across a turn-of-the-century arcade. It was sort of a historical thing you could go in, and you could play these really old quote-unquote arcade games. And it was actually such a trip to see them, because they're not video games. Imagine an arcade that has, like, pinball machines, but then it also has every other sort of physical... Whoa, we got a hill going on? Nobody told me there were hills in this game. Also, you know, hold on, side note, before I talk about this, you know, turn-of-the-century arcade that I, I've seen before, um, let's talk about this cop for a second. He's just driving around in the country, and he's got a car that, like, just shoots bullets non-stop out of the top and the front of him. Um, what? <laughs> what kind of buggy or, or police car would you ever need to just fire repeatedly into the sky. Like, what kind of car is, is equipped to do that? Doesn't make a lot of sense. I refuse to believe this guy's a cop. Some kind of, like, I don't know, soldier or something. Oh, this is easy. This is nothing compared to the mines. Tease a breeze. Guys, we're gonna beat this game. No problem. So this turn of the century arcade is basically just what it sounds like. It's all these physical games, because there were no video games. So you have like, um, 
you know, baseball and horse racing and stuff. And it's all mechanical. There's, like, balls and you have to, like, hit things with your little uh, characters. And, you know, what? when I was thinking about this game and the fact that it existed along pinball machines, I started to wonder how come more, like, kind of physical arcade games didn't exist in the 80s? Like, why, why was pinball the only one that was kind of left? And again, I started to think, you know, what would have happened if, uh, if pinball hadn't really stolen the show? Whoa, a tank! Hold on. All this time, I've been shooting rocks with my board gun. I didn't realize there were tanks. Get out of here. Interesting. <laughs> I guess I can't just run into them full speed. Well, we're on, we're on the T through Zs. It's kind of like a weird... In a weird way, this is like the alphabet game. It's like you could learn your alphabets and have some fun on the moon. The moon is such a, like, sci-fi staple. It's almost, like, overdone. Like, it's cheesy to do stuff on the moon. Like, in Futurama, they really make fun of the fact that they're on the moon in the episodes where they go to the moon. Like, it's almost a joke. And, like, Lunar City, Luna City, I don't know. It would have been interesting to, like, read sci-fi back in the day when people had not really thought much about the moon, but it's kind of like we thought about it so much, it's not even interesting. The moon's pretty boring. It's like a gray wasteland of, I don't know, broken dreams. <laughs> so the developer of this game, by the way, was a company called IRAM, and they developed a few other classic games like R-Type, which is a classic side-scrolling shooter, uh, which probably we will play at some point. I don't like these guys because they make pits. And what are they? They're like little pieces of DNA or I don't even know. Get out of here. Stop making pits. Whoa, and I'm screwed. <laughs> don't you hate that in games when you see something coming up and you're like, well, there's no way to avoid that. I'm just dead. You can, like, see your own demise coming. Ah, oh, damn it. I fell in the hole. Oh, and I was right at Zed! Come on! Give me a break. Alright. Um, you know, oh. Okay, before I totally change topics here, one last thing I wanted to say about the physical arcade. Have you guys ever seen the YouTube video called Kane's Arcade? Um, there's this kid... Oh! <laughs> Victory! That was so easy! pay to win, right? What did I spend? Probably like three or four bucks on that. So for four dollars, you could beat Moon Patrol. Whoa, and now they like paint your car red. They're like, you've earned it, buddy. You know what you've earned is a new coat of paint. But seriously, get back out there because there's still a lot of uh, space criminals. The idea of being a cop on the moon kind of reminds me of that really, really bad uh, Eddie Murphy movie. I forget the name of it, but it takes place on the moon, has Randy here. What is that thing? Is that my buddy? Is that backup? I'm afraid to touch it. That's another thing in games where there's like, oh, that was totally a bad guy. I totally handled him right. But when something new comes on the screen and you're unsure if it's a good guy or a bad guy, that's always an interesting moment in games too. Right? Oh, there's like tanks. The game got really interesting all of a sudden. There's like more going on. Okay. I thought I was just going to have to play the same levels over again. There'd be really no point to it. But I like the fact that they've mixed it up. Gives me a bit more time to talk to you. Um, so, yeah. One more thing I wanted to say about the, the sort of pinball arcades and stuff is uh, there is a video called Kane's Arcade, which I'm going to put a link to it in the description. So you can check it out if you've never heard of, heard of it before. But it is this kid who was... Who, I guess he still is, probably but obsessed with arcade games, and he builds an entire arcade out of cardboard um, with all these physical games. And it kind of explodes on the internet, and Reddit ends up putting together a game for him. And it's really hard for me to fully describe crap. I'm playing like crap now. Uh, it's really hard for me to fully describe what this game is, but all I will say is that if you have not seen this video, it's like a five minute video, go watch it. It is actually really, really endearing. Um, it is a great video to watch. And it's kind of relevant to this conversation about physical games and arcades. So, see, I'll try to remember to put a link to the description in that. You can call me on it if I forget. I, I'm not the most, you know, met. Oh, God. I'm not the most, not thoughtful, but um, 
what I'm trying to say is I forget things sometimes. Um, I actually have a pretty notoriously bad memory. I don't know about you guys, but if I don't make a note to myself about things, I easily forget. So, yeah. Yes! Anyway, you know another reason that slot machines are kind of relevant talking about this game is that one of their publishers, Williams, was actually a huge uh, manufacturer of pinball machines before they got into arcade games. And I guess a lot of arcade companies are like that. Maybe pinball machines did evolve, they just evolved into video games. I mean, a video game is an evolved pinball machine, who knows. Um, hey, I'm just making conversation, guys, trying to talk about some interesting stuff, whatever comes to my mind. Don't blame me if it doesn't make much sense. I'm just along for the ride like you guys on this wacky planet we call the moon. Yeah. Um, I am going to play... <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I deserve that. Okay, we're going to run this quarter out, and then I'm going to show you guys something crazy, which is... <laughs> we're going to run this, these quarters out fast sooner rather than later. Um, there was a... Oh, right into the bed. That was like a jump into the pit. You know, when you think about it too, the fact that this car can jump is also very bizarre. Yes, yes, yes. What do you think EJOTS stands for, by the way? It'd be kind of funny if that was a word. <laughs> EJOTS. Enjoy Jay on this something. <laughs> Imagine people, like, in their apartment buildings watching this. They're like, hey, there's a guy just driving around, like, with machine guns shooting out of his car. And you just see him, like, take a nosedive into, like, a pit or a rock and explode. You'd be like, well, that was scary. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I, I wonder... I pressed the wrong button there. I wonder what this guy is really trying to accomplish. What is the ultimate mission of Moon Patrol? Also, is it is there like a whole organization called Moon Patrol and I'm just like a cog in the machine? Or am I like the Moon Patrol? Maybe I'm just some dude who like fancies himself a cop, but really I'm just like a vigilante. A vigilante. Oh my god, why did I say it that way? A vigilante. Jeez, a vigilante. It's the more refined crime fighting organization. Okay, come on. I want to put my name on the high scoreboard and then show everyone something. Oh, what? What? <laughs> they don't even give you a high score option. So I guess the idea with this game, as I said, people complained, or the hardcore gamers complained because you could just pay to win and continue to pay. There's no point in getting a high score. And they just done got rid of the high scoreboard. Maybe they knew what they were doing. They're like, you know what? Points don't matter no more. Now it's about beating the game, and people can pay to win, and that's where we're going to make money, and screw it. I mean, why didn't they program in a high scoreboard? Okay, time for a magical switch. Welcome back. Notice anything different? We are now playing Moon Bragner. <laughs> you may be thinking, what the what? Guess what, guys? This is a bootleg version of Moon Patrol. And this is not some bootleg version that came out recently or that, you know, some guys like put together, you know, it's like a ROM hack or something. This was literally released the year that Moon Patrol came out. Um, I'm not completely aware of all the details. I don't know who released it or whatever, but this was a bootleg version of Moon Patrol. And look at it. It is like literally identical. Like, I, we're going to try and see if we can spot any differences at all. But it kind of looks, beyond the, like, garbled title screen, it looks pretty similar to me. And, like, can you believe it? <laughs> like, look, did you see that title screen? It was ridiculous. This is clearly a highly illegal, just straight-up copy of um, Moon Patrol called Moon Ranger. Like, there's literally no difference in the gameplay. This kind of reminds me of if, if you were a fan of Mario. Oh, pfft, that was coming right for me. Nothing I could do. There was a computer game that a company made in the 80s called the uh, uh, Gianna Sisters, or Gianna Sisters. And it was basically a ripoff of Super Mario. 
And Nintendo kind of put a put an end to that. They they shut down the Indiana Sisters. But it wasn't a direct ripoff. It was like somebody had just reprogrammed a game that was very similar to Mario, had some of the levels and stuff ripped right out of Mario. But they at least made their own game. This is literally like somebody must have stolen the code for Moon Patrol, slapped Moon Ranger on the front in horribly hacked letters, and sold it as its own game. Like this is straight up theft. Um, I don't know what to make of this. You know, this isn't even like they changed any of the graphics. It's literally just the title screen. It's unbelievable, in fact. Um, interesting fact about this game, too. It was ported to tons of, of consoles. You had, like, the Commodore and the Atari. It was even ported onto, like, a Texas Instruments um, computer. They designed a fully functional port of this for both ColecoVision and the ZX Spectrum, and they just never released them. I don't know why. Um, I know they were never released. No idea why. And I have no idea why, further in light of the fact that apparently people were straight up ripping this game off in, in the form of Moon Ranger here. I mean, I cannot spot a single difference. Can you guys? It is, it is unfathomable. If a company did this these days, I mean, even if they were an illegal company, I gotta feel like they would get in a lot of trouble. Because this isn't like bootlegging Super Mario Bros. 1 or something like that these days, which is a really old game, so like, I mean, Nintendo still wouldn't like it, but they probably wouldn't bother doing too much to you. This would be like ripping off Mario Maker these days. Like, Mario Maker's a new game. You don't rip off new games like this, you just don't. I mean, like, I don't know. It was a different time back then, man. The 80s is like the wild, wild west, apparently. Um, anyway, the last thing I want to say about this game, before we wrap it up here, because, I mean, there isn't real, really much of a point to getting too far in Moon Ranger here. We've seen all this before. Is, in the book that I'm playing through, A Thousand One Games You Must Play Before You Die, it described this game as one of the most awkward vehicle games in gaming history. When I first started playing through The Thousand One Games You Must Play Before You Die, I took the title to mean 1001 games that are so good you have to play them before you die. But I don't know what's going on in that book anymore. Because it described this game as like awkward and one of the most awkward ones in history. And I've started to figure that maybe what the book is really referring to is the fact that a lot of these games have important places in gaming history. So like the parallax scrolling and the fact that it was bootlegged and all this other crazy stuff was going on. You know, this, this game definitely, there's a lot of history around it. But this isn't necessarily the best game I've ever played. Um, maybe at the time it had some purpose, but I mean these days, I don't think this game necessarily holds up all that well, to be totally honest with you. So yeah, I, I'm having to re rethink this whole Thousand One Games, like what I want to get out of it. I'm still going to play the Thousand One Games, but I don't think I, I, sh I should be going into these games expecting terrific games. Some will be terrific, but some are just kind of like there to troll ya, or I don't know. Or there to like open your eyes to gaming history. So it kind of raised a good point um, that got me thinking, you know, like, what do you guys think about this? Is it worth your time to play games that you know are bad, but that have some kind of historical significance? Or should you only be playing good games? And this kind of goes back to, I asked a question in another video of mine, uh, which should have come out already. If it didn't, I just got the order of these videos reversed. But, you know, when you tell people to play a game, do you tell them to play kind of the best version of that game? Or do you tell them to play the original? So what I mean there is like, Contra 3, for example, is a really good Contra game. It has a lot of elements the first two games didn't have. So in some ways, if somebody's never played Contra before, Contra 3 is the one to start with. But then, at a more respectful level for where the series originated from, nothing beats the original Contra. Um, even if it's kind of harder to play by modern standards. So maybe that's the one that people, quote unquote, should start with when they play games. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to all these questions. I just ask them, and I sit back, and I wonder what you guys will say about all this stuff in the comments below. So let me know. Let me know down below. I will read and reply to your comments. Anyway, guys, um, we'll let this go for one more life here. But let's think about what we've learned here today. We've learned that it's very easy to port games, or to, to illegally rip games in the 80s. We've also learned that Moon Patrol is not a very effective police force. It mainly involves, you know, cruising around in your car in the moon dunes and having a hell of a time while you do it. Oh, yeah. 
All we need is some brewskis and some girls, and this would be like some kind of like moon advertisement for like the moon marines or something. I don't know. Um, I guess the marines don't advertise with weird women in their commercials. I don't know. You know, sometimes when I play these games and I talk at the same time, I say ridiculous stuff, so don't ever take me too seriously. The pros of this game are it is actually like a decent interesting sort of combination of gameplay mechanics and of course historically there's a lot of stuff going on with it in terms of the parallax scrolling and the, one of the first games to popularize continues and so on um and in fact yeah i don't know i don't know if that's enough to, to mean you should play it you know because the cons are like the jump controls suck it's kind of a very simplistic game by today's standards i don't really think this held up all that well so you know is this a game you should play before you die I'm going to say honestly, probably not. Um, you've seen me play it, you've seen me beat it, and you've seen me now almost beat Space Ranger, which is my way of reading the garbled title. Um, you know, this is not really a game that you need to go... Um, you're not really going to experience too much out of it that you can't get from many, many other games. So yeah, th I would say this is, this is one of the rare ones where I would say you really don't have to play this before you die. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out and just chatting about some gaming history and uh, making fun of a fun of a game with me. Um, if you guys have, you know, give me a like, give me a subscribe, because I'll be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game, and uh, we can hang out some more. So until then, guys, take care of yourselves and peace. It's Atari's Moon Patrol, the action-packed video game. Race your moon buggy over enormous craters. Blast attacking saucers. And zap moon rocks. But you'd better watch out. Play Moon Patrol. It's more fun than a barrel of grown mix. You from Atari.